folks, welcome to a Sunday edition of the Free Press Sports with Carlson Sean. I cannot believe how big this news is. Killian Hayes was sent to the bench for all you Pistons fans out there. It happened earlier today. I just, I know that didn't look like a basketball court over our shoulder back there, but I just thought that was by far the biggest is, news is, of the day. Pistons Twitter was going crazy. Is every football story you write a basketball story? You start the Michigan one with what happens at what Madison Square Garden or something, how the fans were there for Michigan before getting into the whole thing with Maryland and all that, right? I mean, you're just... Oh, uh, you mean, oh, when the fans were cheating, yeah, free Harbaugh, free, free Harbaugh, Harbaugh yeah. all the way in New York. Yeah, because it's a conspiracy. Yeah. And, and we also know Michigan fan, Michigan's... Michigan fans are everywhere, and they have an enormous, uh, the university has an enormous alumni base in New York and Southern California, where you're purportedly from. Yeah, yeah, from the desert out there near Phoenix. I'm from Southern California. So, but uh, even out there, they got wind of probably this is going to reverberate through the NFL, right? It, the Lions it, it narrowly is. missed. Yeah, a we're not here to upset. talk about New York or LA or the Pistons. Uh, thankfully, I guess, to a lot of you out there. But my goodness, Carlos, what the heck did we just watch? Well, you, you had your most of your column done, didn't you? Mm-hmm. So you were, did you. And, so did you. What were you saying? Let's start with there. What did your column say with about four minutes to go in the game today when the Lions were trailing 26 to 14? It said uh, I knew this was going to happen. This is what I predicted, exactly how I called it. And I had, was not surprised at all, Sean. This is how, you know, I picked the, the right score in the paper almost well, exactly. Well, so. What had you written at that point? What, what were you about to say? That the Lions were going to come roaring back. As we all know, they're resilient. Um, no, they wouldn't. Of course, everybody, you should have seen press. It was like a bunch of monkeys on, you know, Adderall just trying to like feverishly change what they had written uh, because it happened. I mean, they went with they went ahead with 29 seconds left, but it was like they were down uh, 26 to 14, scores, right? 26 to 14 with four minutes left about or so. Four minutes left. Yeah. What, what and had they're looking you, good. What had you written, though, at that point? What were you going to say? I was because gonna, that looked like a, a yeah. not a good loss. One of the things I was going to say is there's there's little excuse for this, you know, for. The Bears came in with three wins. They still have three wins. They left with three wins. Um, and to do this at home, right, against I mean, Justin Fields' first game in a month, the Bears are not a good team. They have a good front of their defense. The front seven is good. Um, you know, But otherwise, they, they don't have great players. They're a struggling team. Their coach might probably get going to get fired after the end of the season. So they don't have much to play for. And the Lions have a lot to play for. And, you know, so they're they're home. They got the fan. The fans were crazy as, you know, as they have been. Um, and everybody was pretty healthy. They were they were really they were missing Jonah Jackson, your favorite player of all time, uh, an offensive lineman, a guard. So uh, but other than that, they were they were pretty healthy, you know, so they had both running backs. They had Amon Ross St. Browns, Sam Laporta, got all these guys. Right. So there it really made no sense. It was a weird way for them and golf throws three interceptions and just doesn't look good but it was weird i mean i think everybody was kind of shocked weren't you i mean yes it, no 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 i wasn't i don't know that i was shocked because it's still the nfl and this is the thing we always forget about the nfl it's not like there's some sports where the talent disparity can be so great that the bottom teams of the league have no chance i think we see that in hockey some uh, and baseball just depends so much on the pitcher, but the, but right, it, but so many sports, the talent gap can't be overcome. But for whatever reason, in football, especially in, now, maybe college football is different, but in the NFL, right. you're a good player if you get to the NFL. Period. You know how to play football, and you're good. You know, so it's it, the degrees are not a whole lot. You mentioned the front seven of the Bears; they got a good running back. They've got a great receiver, uh, in 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 more. And Fields may not be able to throw much, but. He's a load when he runs. So he made some good throws. So so they can do some things. They've got some talent. And Campbell and a few of the players this past week talked about that, right? They talked they did every talk about week the it's a no, no, no. They the said what what they said what jumped off the film about them, and they, they know this, was how they got after it despite their record, which is a testament to the coach, although I guess the coach is gonna get fired, but the coach is probably gonna get fired to a degree because they have more talent in their record shows, maybe. I mean that I mean it's it's certainly possible. That's generally why coaches get fired. But I, I wasn't shocked because what happens when you have three interceptions and a fumble? Is but that that was does that happening. mean you're not, does that mean you're not ready? Does that mean it's sloppy? Does that mean it's inexcusable? One of the interceptions was bad. He didn't see the linebacker right. who was behind the defensive line and underneath the coverage. He just didn't see him. That's Goss fault. He took blame for that after. But the other two, one's a tip. One's a tip ball. The other one is his man. It, and he could have had two more almost, too. Yeah, Laporta, uh, Laporta got picked, so to speak, and it jammed up the timing. So – what happens? You have four turnovers. You're, you're gonna, you're gonna, ha- you can't get any rhythm. This is, I mean, is right. it inexcusable or is it the NFL football? And you're just gonna have a bad. I mean, I don't know. It would have been, it would have been interesting to see what you wrote if they were, 
any nuance. You'll never know. You'll never know, Sean. It's going to be it's going to be dead and buried. Only I know the truth here. No, I mean this is I, you know there's nobody when I was when I was coming in, we'd have to take a shuttle from our parking you know structure, and on the ticket text or whatever they were reading something, and some someone had texted a Bears fan probably. SOL, go Bears. And they were having fun with it. Oh, yeah, SOL. Oh, cute Bears. Nice try. There's no way. These are not the old, same old Lions. They're going to crush the Bears today. Everybody predicted a win. And and not by a little bit either in this game. So I think that was the surprising part that it kept happening. That the Lions just really offensively couldn't get much rhythm. Defensively couldn't do much, you know, yet again against a mobile quarterback struggling. Coming off a struggling performance defensively in LA. So this is, this was an area of concern. I think, I mean, usually what's, what's been going on with the lines of the offense saves the day, you know, the offense is the dependable unit and, you know, the, the defense is going to let them score some points. It's going to happen. They don't have their, their defense has, it's uneven, right? Against bad teams, they've been holding their own, doing a really good job. And they, they climbed up the, the, the statistical ladder, but against, some better teams and especially with quarter with mobile quarterbacks, it throws them off. So the Lions deep had to rely on their offense today. And when that wasn't happening, when the offense has makes too many mistakes, too many turnovers, you know, Craig Reynolds had a turnover on a, on a kickoff, kickoff you know, so, but Goff, I mean, like Dave Burkett said, you know, he's like, we're talking about the, the, the picks, you know, the golf and say could have had five, he could have had two more picks and he could have won a particular. Yeah, so it was, it, and it could have been a pick six on that yeah. one in the at the goal line. So this is a thing where I'm surprised by this. I'm, I guess mostly I'm surprised by the offense's you know inability to get anything going to sustain any momentum um, up until the end of the game when they really had to come forward and 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 step through. And I think the team was the the, the sense I got from Campbell, Dan Campbell, and the rest of the players was they were really happy to win this game and they're going to color it as boy we're resilient we we can win when it all you know when it comes down to crunch time and Campbell said he told the defensive players this is is there anything more fun than stopping you know all this you can paint it that way but they could have easily lost this game I mean it was in the Bears clutches so that's the thing where you have to be concerned I think is yes they won but you have to look at how they won and what are some of the concerning issues here now Goff has thrown three picks in four or five picks in four games he's normally very accurate but that's something that they got to look hard at the tape for and they don't have a lot of time before thursday's game to correct any like little issues that may be happening but to me that's this is this is a concern you don't do that against a three win i don't care the nfl yeah it's all about parity blah 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 but it the Bears are not a good team you know every team has talent yeah they all have talent of course you're not in the nfl if you don't have talent but there are variations and gradations of talent and experience and winning. And this is what the Lions proved, though, is they proved they are a better team than the Bears because Jared Goff said, you know, the experience having gone through this good teams, he said good teams. I don't know how they do it, but they just pull it out somehow. And the Lions did. They are a good team, but they have to be careful. They have they cannot they cannot survive these kind of games against good teams later on. As they get closer to the playoffs, getting an, you know a high seed in the in the in the playoffs, and when they get to the playoffs, so they got to be careful about this kind of stuff. Well, we saw that earlier in the year against Seattle when they turned the ball over. I want to say I want to say three times. You turn the ball over, you're not gonna, you're almost always gonna lose, right? And again, two of the picks were not really his fault. The other one would mean three picks in four games. That's still too many, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 you take out the couple that are fluke. I don't, I don't remember the other three prior to this. Prior to, prior to today, but um, maybe they were all his fault. Maybe he's just not seen as well. Although, you know, I, I think it has to me it has everything to do with the pocket. Does he have time? He had a lot of time last week in Los Angeles. They had a good defensive line, too. I don't, I don't know that Jonah Jackson makes all that difference. I just think, yes, the Bears uh, were 3-7, and seven and they are what you think they are in, in a degree, but they just added Montez Sweat, who, by the way, got a sack today. And, um, and should have picked him up. Should have picked him up. Were just, there was just more pressure. He did not have as much time to throw today, and that changes everything for him. It just does. He, yeah, but you have to recognize that the Bears have a good front seven. But what can you do? I mean, what do you mean recognize? Change it? things up. You got to be faster. They, you know, no, you know, get out of your hands quicker. And it is true. I mean, Goff has had the luxury of a lot of time back there, and you have to be able to adjust. But that. this no. is the, this is the thing with Goff. What. The, is he the court is is he the quarterback if the box collapsing all the time? What kind of quarterback is he? I mean, that's true of any any quarterback, right? But there are only a few that can get out and make plays. He can do that occasionally here and there. I mean, to me, that was really the difference. 
you know, if they'd lost, yeah, it's a bad loss, mostly because it's at home, and I get it. But they were getting booed. But but they were, they were. But Jer- because of the expectation, right? But Jared Goff talked about this. He, by the way, he said he's been on the other side of these. What happened today? That to me, that's what's amazing. When's the last time? I mean, Stafford did a few few fourth quarter comebacks, but oh, several. Yeah. But twenty six to fourteen with four minutes to go after you played arguably the worst three three and a half quarters of football all year because at least at Baltimore. They're a Super Bowl caliber team, right? So right. the Bears are not. Right. So you can understand that a little and bit more. And it was more. in Baltimore. It's yeah. in Baltimore. It just kind of gets away from you, and yeah. you just can't ever get traction. Today was just, yeah, they just they were a mess in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it was – that. that's the problem is that you cannot – you know – you're, you're going to have to rely on something. And when I think the Lions is pretty clear that they, they rely on their offense, you know, disproportionately probably. But their defense actually sort of saved them today and kept it closer. Uh, save is a strong word. I would say they didn't let it. They didn't let them score 38 points. Like it, was, the it was 14 did. to 10 at the half, right? I mean, they, they held them. After that first touchdown on the first drive, they scored three points the next uh, 18 minutes of football or whatever the math is there, right? So yeah. they were, and, the, and then the third quarter, they struggled again defensively. Right. And they got it back in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were, they weren't as bad as they were last week, but they certainly weren't doing the lines like that many favors. They did have two takeaways, I believe, right? They did. Um, well, one was at the very end, but four turnovers and you only give up 26 points. That's uh, not terrible. It's not amazing. Um, but, you know, that's the, that's the problem here is the lines have to, they have to understand, I think, who they are. They have to understand, you know, that offensively, <laughs> you know, you're, you're just not going to be able to survive these kind of games because the defense is only going to be able to do so much for you. And, yes, they, they, they did enough to win the game. You know, that, I think that's the, <laughs> the mantra for the defense is, is like, let, you know, let, as long as they, we score one more point in the team, everything's good, whether we win 51-50 or whatever. Um, the defense is what it is. They just aren't going to be this overpowering, you know, we're going to save the day kind of a, a unit. Um, but the offense has to do its job. And you, I don't, I don't think we're going to see this kind of a performance again. It was weird. Um, it was part of it's fluky. Part of it's just part of it was fluky. Ran, part of it's just bad luck, right? Some of it's bad luck, um, but also good luck because he could have thrown two more picks and a pick six, and in, including included in that. So, uh, you know, it it goes both ways. Um, but if I'm, I, I think Jared Goff wanted to come in positive in the press conference and he did and he kind of pushed back a little bit on the booing like or at least people booed like pretending you didn't hear it right they booed um and because they expect more from this team well, that's fair um but you have to understand i think with him you know you can't feel good about this game and he, even though he said it's the game is so much more than just about me and my performance or whatever, uh, yes and no. I mean, like, yeah, he's talking about glory stats, and it's not – it's yeah, playing quarterback is not just about glory stats and whatever, but it's about doing the right things to win the game. And that's what he did at the end, you know, in that comeback. He was great. Is he was great. And he led the team the way that we've seen them, you know, do it for most of the season. Um but you got to I hope he's a little bit concerned about this. It's like, listen, what, what was it? What was I not seeing? You know, because you can only look at so much during the game. They're looking at their you know tablets and all that stuff. But he, he I hope he does has enough time for a deep dive before they play the Packers. Uh, just, hey, let's make sure that I'm seeing the right things. You know, talking to Ben Johnson, well, it's talking hard. to Mark Brunel. Let's clean it up. It's harder to see when you don't have time to throw. I mean, it just is. You, you're, it clouds the vision a little bit when you're under pressure. As any in any situation as a human being, it's it's uh, it's gonna it's gonna be trickier. It's just how it is. And so he's got to figure out how can I take fewer chances or see a little bit more clearly under duress because the tougher the team, the more he's gonna yes. be under duress. Yes, there's just there's no way around that, right? But it's not like he was getting. It's not like that it was the eighty-five bears. No, but that no, but that pocket was. But that pocket was collapsing very, very quickly. And by the way, and this this uh, was part of my column before I had to. Actually, maybe I kept part of it. But early third quarter, so they they come out, they struggle in the first half, they play, they get the the last. The last minute drive to end of the second quarter. They go up 14 to 10. It's a nice drive. They come out. They're up by four. They get the ball because they deferred it to start the game, right? And they get to about midfield and they're running the ball. They're a little bit of passing. They're running. Montgomery's running well. By the way, what a what a pickup he's been for the Lions. And you can talk more about him in a sec. But they get to midfield. It's third and two. 
And uh, this is one of the few times I thought Ben Johnson made a mistake. Look, nobody's going to be perfect, even even your guy, and that's fine. But you, you said earlier, be who you are. They weren't who they were in that moment. It was third and two. They'd been running the ball. They got one of the best offensive lines. They got a really good running back in Montgomery and another good one in Gibbs. But especially Montgomery in those short yardage situations. And they're at midfield. So Dan Campbell could probably say, hey, I'll take two runs to, to try to get the two yards. And what do they do? They, it's a deep drop back with no extra protection. There's no back to block. Uh, the linebacker, Sanborn, I think, blitzes and sacks him. And that's it. And then from that play until the last four minutes of the game, it was a delusion the other way. Now, that play wasn't responsible, obviously. Right. But I thought – Everything was a little off kilter, yeah, including, including 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 moments like that. What was on kilter? Is that even a thing to say? Montgomery and then your guy, Jamison Williams, who's uh, the, just oh, yeah. looking a little bit better. Just yeah. at least looking like a, a maybe an NFL player. Yeah, you. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts because you caught up with JMO in the in the locker room. But um, yeah, hands hands like a vice, Sean. Just uh, amazing uh, catching ability and for one game at least. So in in, in the chest after you get in the ball, <laughs> body catcher James Williams. Yeah, uh, yeah, he had to not, that beautiful deep pass to him, uh, thirty two yards for a touchdown. That started it all right for the for the comeback. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I've said this before, and you talk to him after the game, he's always in good spirits. He's always cheerful. He's, uh, I think he's accepted probably, you know, what, who he is and what he needs to work on. Um, essentially almost took a rookie this year. So, um, yeah, that always helps. Having the right attitude, I think, helps in these situations, not being defensive, not being pushing back and pretending that, you know, everything's fine. And he knows he needs stuff to work on. And, uh, Three passes a day, he caught two. So, you know, a, a, a piece, a piece. And that's what they wanted out of him this year is just be a piece. Mm-hmm. And he certainly was in a crucial moment. So uh, credit to him. But uh, what 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 did he say that impressed you? Didn't he pick, didn't he pick up a third for a third down conversion earlier in the game too on a yeah. crossing route? And he got hit and got hit right after he caught it from hind. And we were boy, I hate to say this, but uh we were sort of surprised he held on. He held on to the ball. So the crowd, they cheered wildly. Yeah, they, they did. They did. If, if they can get even just that, they, they don't need a long, over the top touchdown every game. Although they certainly would take Not it. Not this year. They would certainly take it. I don't know. Look, is he ever going to be Jamar Chase or no. Prime DeAndre Hopkins or? No. no, he's not. Justin Jefferson, he's not. But can he be a pretty electric player and? Make a difference to them at some point. He can be. The most important thing is, and, and I talked to him, Dan Campbell mentioned this a little bit. I talked to Taylor Decker, Alex Anzalone, a couple other guys that, that they like him in the locker room because he has done his assignments, even as he struggled with route running, where to be at certain times, how to react if the play breaks down, you know, gaining the, the connection and the trust with, with, with Jared Goff in particular, and then dropping the balls, obviously. Yeah. Right. You know, and he, everybody knows what he's been through and the injuries and the gambling and suspension and the ACL coming out of Alabama, all of that. But the fact that he's starting to make a play here or there. Yeah. And the fact that he all along has made football plays that don't, you know, he had a really nice block on one of Montgomery's uh, early runs in the first quarter. And uh, you can see the way the team has reacted to him. Yeah. Coming off the sideline, you know, mm-hmm. it's funny because they know, right? They, they, yeah. they understand that. Oh, yeah. So that is, I still don't want to say that saved him, but that has kept him connected. And a lot of his teammates were talking about that. Hey, he's struggling with all this stuff, but he's doing little football things and likes to play football. And as you mentioned, mm-hmm. you've talked to him. He's kind of a, you know, he doesn't take himself too, too seriously in that way, does he? Yeah. He takes his work serious. Yeah. And maybe, maybe we, Maybe he didn't get a fair shake for that, but you know he does. He works at it. Yeah, no, he's uh, he, he's got the right attitude, and I think Campbell said after the game, you know, like you know, he's part of the herd. You know, he's been accepted, and and I think that's the thing in football. It's really just um, you mean you have may, may have varying degrees of success, right? But it's always are you working at getting better and helping the team, even if you're not great. I mean, they don't care that he was a whatever the 12th overall pick. They don't care. Nobody cares about that. Uh, you know, on the fans team. do but fans do players. Don't teams don't. It's just who are you going to come in here and you're going to work and you're going to try to help. Are you not going to you're going to be unselfish if you do those things? It's just like any sports team, really. Right. I mean, if you're unselfish and you're helping the team by your by getting better yourself by doing things like you know blocking um yeah you'll be accepted and people will will appreciate that and they'll give you chances for it and you know that's where he is right now N- you know next year 
Um, assuming that he has a full season and there's no injuries or no suspensions or whatever it might be, if he has a real normal just full season, I think that's when you've got to see year three. You've got to see something out of him. The expectation. The expectation is just yeah. So, but today, you know, he he did he did something important, something vital that helped the team. That's a huge step. They don't win without him today, right? If he doesn't get behind the defense and they have to chew up Mark, I mean, you just don't know. Maybe you can't say that for sure, but right. I'm not sure they won without him today. And and that yeah. and that that Fair. play. Fair. I mean, but you, you, you need everybody. I'm not sure. We're going to wrap this up here in a sec. I'm not sure we've done enough to say just how crazy that was. We, we've been focused on how poorly they played and the struggles and, the you know, all of this kind of stuff. And that's all true. But they were down 26 to 14 with, with four minutes to go and won the game. Yeah. That's uh, that's not something people are used to around here. Yeah. They, they, they really uh... – it, it, it felt weird, you know. I think at halftime they were winning, right? 14, 14 to 10. 10. And I said, I, it doesn't feel like they're winning. It just, it just, they were doing so many things. You did say that. To hurt themselves. They're yeah. Doing bites of a coney dog, I think. Yeah. And it Mustard, was. Mustard, right? And chili. Yeah. And, and chili. No, no onions. No onions. It's onions. gross. Um, you don't like onions. Mm, too much flavor? Not, not raw. Too not much, raw. Too much flavor? It's too, it overwhelms Tastes the too dish. Good? Yeah. No, it overwhelms the dish. It's, yeah. it's overpowers. The accents. I like the subtlety. I like you have to build depth of flavor. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, and that and and that's why because they they probably should have been up by more. I guess that's what we're we're used to. But they they'd had more opportunities, and because of the turnovers, they they weren't happening, and they were letting the bears. No. Get closer and four and, turnovers. And, I yeah. still, still. And, and you looked at the Bears, and the Bears should have been up by more, but they couldn't capitalize mm-hmm. as much as they should have either. Um, so it had a weird feel to it, but um, but yeah, they they pulled it out dramatically at the end. Um, so it depends on your despite outlook, the right? booze, despite the booze, um, mm-hmm. which which I, I have to say, uh, you don't blame them. I do. Bl- I don't like it. I don't, like, don't like it, it because, it. listen, you can't be fair weather. You can't just uh, if you're any kind of it's intelligent not, fan, you can't just say, you know, we scored. Yay. Oh, pick. Boo. But that's, you know, not, you can't, but that's not being for weather, fair weather. Right. Fair weather means you, you're you're engaged. You're indifferent. They're, no, they fair they, weather means you're you're up when you're up they, and you're down when you're down. They care the whole time. They care the whole time. Right. Yeah. But have some perspective. That, the booing, have the some booing perspective. comes from. <laughs> Have some perspective. How's it hard to have? It's hard to have perspective when you're out there in the middle of that and you're you're wrapped onto this. Right? It's the first time they're eating since 1962. You want these people to? You're to not, not a fan. Feel, uh, no, you're not a fan. I'm still a fan of my teams. You have no rooting interest in any team, so you I understand. do. Actually, I have a. No, I one, do. Who? What do you root for? I can't. I'm not going to say that right. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Well, I I tell you, I root hard for my Dodgers, no, for my no, Kings, no for my college baseball team, and I like you know almost break furniture when things don't go well. But I don't I don't boo people. I don't get on them right away. No, I understand. I, I, I don't do that mistakes, either, but I understand why people do it. That's not for me. But I'm not gonna. You know, I certainly understand people doing that. They care. They're passionate. They, sure, they do. And and the ticket gives you you know the right to do whatever you want. I, that's I believe that. Well, but I think oh, the reason, better fan within reason. Well, yes. I mean, cheering and booing, whatever. But don't I don't I just don't like the near knee jerk reactions to like, hey, Goff's throwing some picks, whatever. Well, it's not going the right way. We call the run play instead of a pass. I don't like it. Let me start booing. Like, come on. Look, I'm grateful for that, because if it weren't for that, nobody would be listening to us right now. Or, you can still be or, passionate. Or reading our stuff. I mean, we 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 are we are navigating in the in the in the currency. We're we're dealing in the currency of this kind of yeah. unfettered passion. It's it, it it's often nonsensical. There's not a lot of logic to it, right? That's that's part of the it's part of it doesn't the experience. have to be that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, but it is that way. It's it's uh, that way all over the world, and it's a good thing as long as it doesn't get violent. You're not a violent man. No. You're a peaceful man. No, of course. You just don't like raw onion. <laughs> on your on your chili dog. What about tacos? Yeah, I gotta sit next to you. Do you want me to eat? Raw what about onion? tacos? Um, because because a, a nice little alpastor, it depends. It depends alpastor yes. taco, for example, a burrito taco, whatever. A little cilantro and cut up white, white disgusting onion. Disgusting, it should be outlawed. But um, you don't like anything with disgusting. with braised and that much flavor. Goat meat should be outlawed. I don't even know oh why. My God, goat meat's actually that. delicious. It's disgusting. It's a menudo it, should be disgusting. It should be outlawed too. Anyway, you don't like menudo either. Tripe. Well, uh, tripe. No, I no, no I know what menudo is. I, I understand tripe a little bit more, but you don't like goat. No, it's gross. gross. At least birria, the way it's, it's, it's a little, made goat's not that different from lamb. Oh, it's a lot different. I don't. Yeah, it's really not. Yeah, I don't eat lamb either. But okay, that's just a conscientious thing. But. Onion, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> onion will fix it all. Do you yeah. eat celery? Uh, I try to avoid it. Actually. Do you? Yeah, so the pot roast that I brought you—that's cooked with 
It starts it's, off. It's with different. No carrot well, and celery and onion actually yes. and all sorts cooked, of stuff. Cooked stuff is fine, but it just like chopped up and like here, let's get rid of this. Okay. Um, no. Okay. All right. Speaking of food, the next time we get together is going to be Thanksgiving, uh, right here. Are you coming? I am. The Good. Detroit Lions are going to play. Uh, do I need to say Detroit? The Lions are going to play. Well, they're always. Are putting you not Dan Miller? They're always the Detroit Lions. They're always like, putting. Are they, De- they're always putting Detroit in our copies. If we don't know, uh, <laughs> if we don't know where we are, the, the readers don't know where we are. We'll be back here Thursday for uh, the Lions uh, Packers Thanksgiving game. White meat or dark meat for your turkey? Or Come on, you know, white, white meat, meat, of course, or duck. <laughs> it's it's leaner. What about duck? I don't. I haven't had a lot of duck. I don't know how was. I have had. Last time I had duck was duck orange. How is it prepared? Is my, it? No, my mother. Used, my mother used to always make a duck on Thanksgiving along with a turkey. Oh. Wow, impressive. Oh, I miss those days. That was that was really good. I'm, I'm a dark meat kind of guy, obviously. Of course, of yeah. Course. Well, you know, it's. <laughs> It's You're the, a man of the people. No, well, there's just more <laughs> flavor there, you know. But but white meat's healthier for you. So, yeah. So it's a it's a it's a trade off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally understand that. All right, let's uh, let's get out of here. All right, we'll be back uh, Thursday, and we'll see if they can get the nine and two for the first time. I still, again, four minutes to go, down twelve points. Bam, bam, two impressive drives. The one to to Jamison Williams. A couple of stops. One, the last one leads in a safety when Hutchison got back. And all of a sudden, they're uh, they're eight and two for the first time in 40 years. No, longer than that. 62. 62 years, sorry. Which is um, which is really something. So 61 years. Yeah. Are you used to this? Are you used to that we're all of a sudden getting into this territory where we're starting to say, hey, they haven't done something like this in six decades? It's a little bit. I mean, they does it feel normal yet? Uh, they've broken some, you know, the O for Wisconsin streak over the years and stuff. So yeah, little by yeah. little, I mean, they've, they've uh, for those of us who've been here during the lean years, Sean, like, they've gotten better progressively, little by little, since 0 16. And this is obviously the high point under the Campbell era. But yeah, I'm kind of getting used to it now, aren't you? Yeah, but this is, feels a little bit different, as I think people out there would tell you. But uh, huh. but that's a little Fair. more nuanced, maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's. I don't have that right. capability. I don't, well, I, I certainly don't either. All right, you got to go write. I have to go try to write. <laughs> not sure. I'm not sure if I can. But uh, in any way, in any case, thanks for joining us on this uh, Sunday edition of Free Press Sports with Carl's and Sean. Always good to see you, buddy. All right, you too, Sean. All right, until Thursday after Thanksgiving. <laughs>